May the gods watch over your battles, friend. I need your help. I need to trap a dragon in your palace. Uh, I must have misheard you. I thought you asked me to help you trap a dragon in my palace. You know I wouldn't ask if it wasn't important. Of course. You already saved Whiterun from that dragon. I owe you a great deal. But I don't understand. Why let a dragon into the heart of my city when we've been working so hard to keep them out? The threat is worse than you know. Alduin has returned. Alduin? The world eater himself? But how can we fight him? Doesn't his return mean it's the end times? I'm Dragonborn. It's my destiny to stop him. I don't know about such things. But I heard the Greybeard summon you. That's good enough for me. Now what's this nonsense about trapping a dragon in my palace? It's the only way to find Alduin before it's too late. I want to help you, Dragonborn. And I will. But I need your help first. Ulfric and General Tullius are both just waiting for me to make a wrong move. Do you think they will sit idle while the dragon is slaughtering my men and burning my city? No. I can't risk weakening the city while we are under the threat of enemy attack. I'm sorry. What if you didn't have to worry about an enemy attack? Then I would be glad to help you with your mad dragon trapping scheme, but getting both sides to agree to a truce will be difficult at this point. The bitterness has gone too deep. Maybe. Hmm. What of the Greybeards? They are respected by all Nords. High Hrothgar is neutral territory. If the Greybeards were willing to host a peace council, then maybe Ulfric and Tullius would have to listen. Leave that to me. I'll talk to Arndir about hosting a peace council. Aye, Dragonborn. Maybe you can stop the dragons and this war into the bargain. Now, if you don't mind, hey, I've got a city to keep. You need to leave. You need to leave. The city's changed, friend. You need to the leave. The thieves' guilt is on their eyes, and they've got a firm foothold here in Whiterun. You need to leave. Everything all right? I need your help to stop them more. You misunderstand our authority. The Greybeards have never involved themselves in political affairs. The old Belgruf won't help me while them rages. I see. The dragon will lead you to Alduin, but without the Jarl's help. 
Both sides respect the Greybeards. They will listen. Parthenax has made the decision to help you. This is the road we have to walk. Even the Greybeards must bend to the winds of change, it seems. So be it. Tell Ulfric and General Tullius that the Greybeards wish to speak to them. We will see if they still remember us. Breath and focus. Wait. I know you. You're making a mistake. There's no mistake. You're a wanted man and it's time to pay for your crimes. I'm what they killed. Is this enough to clear my bounty? I can make all your problems with the guards go away. But it'll cost you. What do you say? Yes, clear my bounty. Done. Now move along before you get me in trouble. Maybe you haven't heard, but the Thieves' Guild is back. Windhelm is their city now, if you catch my meaning. Algrif won't give us a straight answer. He's a true Nord. He'll come around. Don't be so sure of that. We've intercepted couriers from some... Only the foolish or the, the courageous approach a Jarl without summons. Do I know you? I have a message from the Greybeards. It's about time they turn their gaze from the heavens back to our bleeding homeland. What do they want? They wait to negotiate a truce until the dragon menace is dealt with. I have the greatest respect for the Greybeards, of course. And the dragon attacks are a growing plague. But the political situation is still delicate. Not all the Jarls are fully committed to supporting me as High King. I can't afford to appear weak. I can't agree to this unless Tullius himself will be there. Politics be damned. Alduin has returned. Alduin? The world eater of song and legend? If that's true, well, it changes the situation, doesn't it? Even Tullius may be forced to talk sense in the face of such a threat. So you come to the Peace Council? Yes. I'll give Tullius one more chance to quit Skyrim with his tail between his legs. And what would you have me do? If he's not with us, he's against us. Vines bless you. May the ground you walk Here, break as you pass. have a gold piece. Oh, thank you. Divines bless your Here, divine... Here, have a gold piece. I was the finest scout in the Legion once. I tracked down all the places in the wild that would cause me trouble.
I mostly deal with... Are my men now giving free reign to anyone who wanders into the castle? Do you have some reason to be here, citizen? I have a message from the Greybeards. The Greybeards? What do those old hermits want with me? They're convening a peace council at High Hrothgar. Why, there's nothing to discuss as long as that traitor Ulfric is in arms against his rightful emperor. We need a truce until the Dragon Menace is dealt with. They are getting to be a problem. But I wasn't sent to Skyrim to fight dragons. My job is to quell this rebellion, and I intend to do just that. Dragons or no dragons. The dragons are a bigger problem than the Stormcloaks right now. Oh, you may have a point. It's getting difficult to even move troops around without attracting a dragon attack. By all accounts, the Stormcloaks are suffering just as badly. Even Ulfric might see the sense of a truce under these conditions. You'll come to the Peace Council, then? Yes, yes, fine. I'll come to this Greybeard Council. For all the good it will do. I'm telling you, Ulfric's planning an attack on Whiterun. He'd be insane to try. He doesn't have the men. That's not what my scouts report, sir. Every day more joint. The Greybeards have called a peace council at High Rothgar. And can you believe it? Both Ulfric, Stormcloak, and General Tullius have agreed to go. violence are gathered here, in these halls whose very stones are dedicated to peace. I should not have agreed to host this council. The Greybeards have no business involving ourselves in such matters. Don't worry, I'll get them to agree to peace. Peace? <laughs> I doubt it. They may put their weapons down for a moment, but only to gather strength for the next bloodletting. They are not yet tired of war. Far from it. Do you know the ancient Nord word for war? Season unending. And so it has proved. But regrets are pointless. Here we are. Take your seat at the council table, and let us see what wisdom we can find among these warriors of Skyrim. So, Arn Gear, is it? You know why we're here. Are you going to let us in or not? You are not invited here. You are not welcome here. And so we meet again. But this time I know who and what you really are. If you can arrange an end to the fighting, Dragon's Reach is at your disposal. Is everyone here? Let's get this started. I'm here because it's required of me. But there's nothing to be gained by talking to that murderer. I'm glad I finally got a chance to see this place. When has any good ever come from talking to the Empire? Delay. Uh, please, take your seat so that we can begin. I never thought I'd ever willingly stand in the same room with Tullius again. At least not without a weapon in my hand. We must succeed here today. 
Now that everyone is here, please take your seats so we can begin. I hope that we have all come no. here in the spirit you of... No. You insult us by bringing her to this negotiation? Your chief Talos hunter? That didn't take long. Diplomat. Here, here. Sure. I have every right to be at this negotiation. I need to ensure that nothing is agreed to here that violates the terms of the White Gold Concordat. She's part of the Imperial delegation. You can't dictate who I bring to this council. Please. If we have to negotiate the terms of the negotiation, we will never get anywhere. Perhaps this would be a good time to get the Dragonborn's input on this matter. By Izmir's beard, the nerve of those Imperial bastards, eh? To think that I would sit down at the same table with that. Found more bitch. Either she walks or I do. What's the harm? Besides, Tullius doesn't really want her here either. Maybe so, but bringing her here is a deliberate provocation. Tullius needs to know I won't be pushed around. Let Tullius have his way on this. He'll have to give crown later. Hmm. It feels like a mistake to me. But I'll bow to your judgment on this. But she is to observe nothing more. We are not negotiating with her. Is that clear? Elfric, why so hostile? After all, it's not the Thalmor that's burning your farms and killing your sons. She's supposed to be on our side? You know exactly... No. Not this time. Now that that's settled, may we proceed? I have something to say first. Here we go. The only reason I agreed to attend this council was to deal with the Dragon Menace. There's nothing else to talk about. Unless the Empire is finally ready to renounce its unjust claim to rule over the free people of Skyrim. I knew he wouldn't We're be able to, to resist. A temporary truce to allow the Dragonborn here to deal with the dragons, nothing more. I consider even talking to the Empire a generous gesture. Are you done? Did you just come here to make speeches, or can we get down to business? Yes, let's get this over with. Are we ready to proceed? Jarl Ulfric, General Tullius, this council is unprecedented. We are gathered here at the Dragonborn's request. I ask that you all respect the spirit of High Hrothgar. Do your best to begin the process of achieving a lasting peace in Skyrim. Who would like to open the negotiations? Yes, let's get down to it. We want control of Markar. That's our price for agreeing to a truce. So that's why you're here, Ulfric? You dare to insult the Greybeards by using this council to advance your own position? Jarl Elisif. General, oh, this is outrageous. You can't be taking this demand seriously. I thought we were here to discuss a truce. Elisif, I said I'd handle it. Ulfric, you can't seriously expect us to give up Markarth at the negotiating table. You hope to gain in council what you've been unable to take in battle, is that it? I'm sure Jarl Ulfric does not expect something for nothing. Yes, that'd be entirely out of character. Want in return. Wait, General, you don't intend to just hand over Markarth to that... traitor? This is how the Empire repays us for our loyalty? Enough! First, let's be clear. This council wasn't my idea. I think it's a waste of time. You are a traitor to the Empire, and deserve a traitor's death. But I at least will negotiate in good faith. Since we're all here at your request, I'd like to hear what you think Markarth is worth. Dunstar seems like a fair trade. In exchange for Markarth, the source of most of Skyrim's silver. Hardly. Riften seems like a better choice to me. Well fortified, easily resupplied from across Lake Honric, plus all the mead we can drink. There are advantages to gaining Dunstar. Not enough to outweigh the loss of Markarth. With the reach in enemy hands, our whole position in solitude would be threatened. 
You asked my opinion. I gave it to you. Fair enough. I was hoping you could put aside your loyalties for the greater good, but I see you're firmly in Ulfric's camp. Still, having another port would ease our supply situation considerably. Better than nothing, I suppose. But Ulfric will need to offer a lot more if he wants me to give up Markarth without a fight. The Dragonborn has spoken, Talius. Markarth will be ours. Now we'll see if there's anything behind your talk of good faith. I don't blame you, Dragonborn. You made the best of a bad situation. But I can see now that this is not a negotiation at all. I know you, Ulfric. If I hand over Markarth, you'll be ready with a new demand. You'll never defeat the Empire, and you know it. But you're willing to sacrifice thousands for your own selfish ambition. Soon enough, I'll have you back under the Headsman's Axe, and this time there won't be any dragon to save you. As always, the Empire's fine words are worth nothing. Stop! Are you so blind to our danger that you can't see past your pity disagreements? Here you sit arguing about nothing, while the fate of the land hangs in the balance. Is he with you, Delphine? If so, I advise you to tell him to watch his tongue. He is with me. And I advise you both to listen to what he has to say before you do anything rash. Don't you understand the danger? Don't you understand what the return of the dragons means? Alduin has returned, the world eater. Even now he devours the souls of your fallen comrades. He grows more powerful with every soldier slain in your pointless war. Can you not put aside your hatred for even one moment in the face of this mortal danger? A very pretty speech. But what does That's it have to do you. with the... I don't know about the end of the world, but this dragon situation has gotten out of hand. If this truce will help the dragonborn here put an end to that menace, we both gain. Remember that, Ulfric. Now, back to the matter at hand. You know as well as I do that we can't hand over Markarth on these terms. Source bones, where will these demands end? I'm listening. We want compensation for the massacre at Carthwaston. You slaughtered the very people you claim to be fighting for. True sons of Skyrim would never do such things. Damned Imperial lies. My men would never stoop to such methods, even in retaliation this for your butchery at... All the blood spilled in this war is on your head. You've been even-handed so far. What do you say to our demand? Ulfric should compensate you for Carthwaston. Well said. For once you'll actually pay for your crimes. I suppose that's the fairest deal we're likely to get. It seems we may have an agreement. Jarl Ulfric, General Tullius, these are the terms currently on the table. Markarth will be handed over to Ulfric's forces, Jarl Igmund will step down, and Thangvor Silverblood will become the Jarl of Markarth. Ulfric will allow Imperial forces into the Pale, Skald the Elder will go into exile, and Brynna Merilis will assume the Jarlship. The Stormcloaks will pay appropriate compensation for the massacre at Carthwaston. You both agree to this? I shouldn't agree to terms that so blatantly favor the Empire. I have no choice, though, under the circumstances. But once Aldwin is defeated, then it will be the Empire's turn. Remember Evgir Unslav. You should be pleased, Elisif. You've done well for yourself as the Empire's pet yarn. But beware, the Empire's loyalty is fickle. They will tire of this war, and then I will be the one dictating terms to you. I have nothing to say to that murderer. General, you've proven yourself a good friend to Skyrim. I continue to trust that you will do your utmost to safeguard our interests. Thank you, Jarl Elisif. I appreciate your loyalty. The Empire can live with these terms, yes, for a temporary truce, until the Dragon Menace is dealt with. After that, Ulfric, there will be a reckoning. Count on it. Come on, Delmar. We have a lot of work to do. 
Giving up Markarth is a heavy price for this truce, Dragonborn. I hope it was worth it. Jarl Balgruf, I assume you are familiar with the Dragonborn's plan? Yes, I'm ready to do my part. Just say the word, and my men will help you spring this trap. But the difficulty remains, how to lure a dragon to Dragon's Reach at all? Well, that's an excellent question. You haven't overlooked that little detail, have you? Ah, I believe I can be of help here. I anticipated the problem. While you were arranging this meeting, I was busy in the library of Skyhaven Temple, an unguessed trove of lost lore. But the important thing is that the blades recorded many of the names of dragons they slew. Cross-referencing this with Delphine's map of dragon burial sites, I believe I've identified one of the dragons that Alduin has raised up. How does that help us? Uh, don't you see? The names of dragons are always three words of power, shouts. By calling the dragon with a voice, he will hear you wherever he might be. Why would he come when called? He's not compelled to, but dragons are prideful by nature and loath to refuse a challenge. Your voice in particular is likely to intrigue this dragon after your victory over Alderaan. I think it's very likely that he will be unable to resist investigating your call. So what's this dragon's name? Ah, indeed. I'm no master of the voice like these worthy gentlemen. But it is written here in this scroll. Oda Vin, winged snow hunter, as I read it. I'd give a week's pay to see the look on Ulfric's face again, when he had to swallow the terms of the truce. There's one more thing we know about. You know what? Parthenax, the dragon that the Greybeards have been protecting for all these years. He needs to die. He deserves to die. And it falls to you to kill him. Until he's dead. I'm sorry, but we would dishonor our oaths as blades if we continue to help you. About Parthenax. Make your choice, Dragonborn. You're either with us or against us. Why does he need to die? Here's the big picture. He helped Alduin enslave our ancestors. He may have betrayed Alduin in the end, but that makes him worse, not better. We can't afford to give Parthenax the opportunity to betray us in turn, and return to his old master. Fear this truce will not last. You gave the Empire too much. Ulfric will not let that stand for long. The Blades wake me to kill Parthenax. Now you see why I warned you against them. Bloodthirsty barbarians. Is it true what they said? Was he Alduin's ally? Yes. But understand, during the days of Alduin's rule, all dragons were his allies. There was nothing else they could be. If not for Parthenax, Alduin could not have been overthrown. It was he that first taught men to use the Thum. I haven't decided what to do yet. Ah, you're learning, Dragonborn. Doing nothing can be the wisest choice, although strangely often the most difficult. I trust that you will make the right choice in the end. Listen to the voice that Kinnereth has placed within you, and your path will be clear. Sky above, voice within. 